Hi there, welcome back to the scene series. Last episode, we painted a scene from 101 Dalmatians, and this time, we're doing a rom-com. We're painting a scene from Pretty Woman. Grab your art supplies and let's create together. Now, I was thinking, did you really say $100 an hour? So far in the scene series, we've covered a lot of adventure movies and shows. We started with The Mandalorian and Harry Potter. We did paint a scene from Queen Charlotte, the Bridgerton spin-off, but we haven't painted any other romance or rom-com movies. We've also painted The Grand Budapest Hotel, The Omen, Christmas movies, E.T. and Two Disneys, which I guess kind of count. So here we are painting the first rom-com. This painting I used watercolour, gouache and colour pencils. I had high hopes and it did not go to plan, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. The film Pretty Woman came out in 1990, and honestly, I don't know why, but I thought it was older than that. It features Richard Gere and Julia Roberts, and it's about an entrepreneur that hires an escort to accompany him to social events, but they end up falling in love. So it doesn't sound very romantic, but it is. It has a good script and it has lots of iconic scenes. There really were so many that I could have chosen, but I ended up choosing one at the beginning of the movie. The film has a pretty short intro, we see a bit of both Vivian and Edward's backstories. Then they meet and the story begins. After Vivian drives Edward to where he wants to go and the two sort of part ways, this scene is the iconic moment that Edward invites Vivian to stay with him. One thing I really liked about this scene was the fact that the background is kind of blurry, you can see street lights, but the focus is on the two main characters, and that's something that I generally will look for when I'm choosing a scene. I'm more than happy to add details, but if there's people in the scene and a very detailed background, that's gonna take longer than a day. There were so many iconic scenes in this movie that I could have chosen though. And honestly, this one was not my first choice. My first choice was actually the scene where Vivian gets dressed up all fancy and she's holding lots of bags of shopping. I watched the entire sequence through trying to choose a scene, but every clip is very cluttered. If I was working on a bigger scale, then I probably could have done it. And also in theory, I could have adapted it to not include the street lights in detail, all of the shops, the extra characters in the sketch, or I could have made them appear blurry. But for this series, I do try to keep the scenes as close to the reference as I can. And unfortunately, there was just a lot of unnecessary clutter in that entire sequence, but I love it so much. And even though those scenes were my first and second choice, I must admit I did really want to do a Julia Roberts scene where she has curly hair. I love the scene that I picked, but unfortunately because she's wearing a wig, I think that contributes to her not being very recognisable. There were quite a few scenes with the iconic curly hair, but unfortunately a lot of the time that she's dressed up in all these unique outfits, she doesn't have the curly hair. Although I guess there's the part where she's in the same outfit as this one but does have curly hair, but I think that's a very cluttered street scene if I remember. It's a really good film and if you haven't seen it I fully recommend. It does touch on sensitive subjects and it has a couple of uncomfortable scenes but they are also kind of important for the plot. I have also watched Runaway Bride which does feature Richard Gere and Julia Roberts again and it's lovely seeing the two of them together again but it's nowhere near as good as this film. Runaway Bride is a bit more of a funny feel good kind of film. I guess Pretty Woman is a bit more of a romance than a rom-com and it's definitely got a unique storyline. As far as sketchbooks go though, this is the most high pressure sketchbook that I have. The first big sketchbook I had, and when I say big I mean not my very first sketchbook tool which is the tiny one, it was the second one. When I got into painting again, I bought two sketchbooks. I got this Etcher sketchbook, which was A4, and I got a tiny moleskin which I've actually done a review on and it's up on my channel as my very first sketchbook tour. 
And that first big sketchbook had the same amount of pressure. The pressure to make it pretty, make it cohesive, make it look like a really lovely sketchbook. And since then I've completed 10 or so sketchbooks. And they're a lot more chilled now. They have sketches, ideas, swatches, random pieces. Whilst I am stepping away from that unnecessary expectation that a sketchbook has to be amazing, I do sometimes feel a slight pressure. When it comes to art challenges, I do, because if the painting doesn't go well, you can't really do anything about it. The pages need to be in order, and in some ways that's good because it means you can accept what you've created for what it is and just move on, but it also means you can't redo it and you probably don't have time to do many alterations or come back to it another day because otherwise you're not going to finish the entire month-long art challenge. This sketchbook is similar, aside from art challenges, this is the only one that I do feel a bit of pressure for. I'd like the sketchbook to look good, and I'd like the painting to turn out well. I obviously won't be skipping any for this series. Regardless of how it goes, I'm going to show you anyway, and I would of course like them all to turn out well, but sometimes that just isn't the case. And don't get me wrong, sketchbooks shouldn't be a place for pressure, it's just this one. I'm working in about 5 others at the moment and they aren't, plus I've also got the Daily Doodle Diary which is just a place for fun. I don't think it's a very well known challenge but it's basically a challenge where I attempt to draw every day for one year in a diary and if you'd like to see how that's going I'll leave the playlist down below. That's quite the big challenge to be doing, so unfortunately with this painting I rushed the sketch. I used colour pencils and they didn't rub out well, so there wasn't a lot that I could change. The anatomy is not quite there, I think the heads are a little bit big, they kind of look like bobble heads. Richard Gere kind of looks like himself, but maybe 20 years younger. I think the biggest problem is just the way that I sketched Julia Roberts' face. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like her. I think the eyes are too big, the nose isn't right, and the shape of the face just isn't her. Obviously, I'm not trying to trace the scene, I am drawing the faces how I would draw them in my art style. But especially working on faces that small, I think this was just really difficult to get right. And this is a pretty common problem for me. Naturally, it's just more difficult to sketch a face really small. The sketchbook I'm working in is a B5 hot pressed etcher sketchbook. It's a really lovely sized sketchbook for most things, but sometimes I personally find it a little bit small if I'm adding tiny details, like faces. Especially because when taping down the page, you actually lose quite a lot of space compared to just using a clip and going right to the edges. I planned for this piece to only be watercolour, but after painting both the characters, I kind of noticed that the values didn't look right. Sometimes when I play it safe and do very light washes, it kind of looks like the people are blending into the background, and that's what happened here. I knew the background needed to be painted darker because I wanted to try the same technique that I've done before for my Home Alone painting. I added really light gouache and blended it out to create spots of light, and that just wouldn't have worked with the background also being light. I think this worked better for the Christmas tree than for the street lights though. The biggest difference was that because the background wasn't the right shade, I added dark gouache to try and fill in the background, whereas in the Home Alone one I only used watercolour for the background and then I just added the light spots. So unfortunately on this one, the background doesn't look blurry like there's depth, it just kind of looks streaky. Dearly, gouache should be painted in layers, I just didn't think that would look very cohesive with the watercolour that we'd painted. And I'm using my Himi Jelly gouache for this just because it's what I find easiest to add in this situation. Compared to dry gouache, jellies don't need many layers and they're very opaque to start off with. I do now have acrylic gouache actually, so I wonder if this technique might work better for that. I also used colour pencils to help with definition and refine those lines. It's one of my art goals this year, so it's something I'm really focusing on. Overall, with this painting, I think if I'd have worked on paper that was double the size, spent twice as long painting, and perfected the sketch before beginning, it could have looked really good. I have this thing when I sketch portraits quickly that I unintentionally make faces really long. If you look out for it in the video where I drew 100 faces in one day, you will really notice it. And that's kind of what happened here. It's still a fun scene and I think it's kind of recognisable. Richard Gere kind of looks like himself, it's just a shame about Julia's character. On the other hand, it's always good to remember that this is a painting, it's not a photograph. We're trying to create something in our own style and I think that kind of comes across. 
This one and all of my other paintings in the scene series are now up on my imprint store as prints and stickers if you're interested in any of them. And if you've missed any episodes, I'll leave the playlist down below. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Are there any films or TV shows you would like to see me paint? Please let me know in the comments down below and I might pick yours next time. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you have, please consider leaving a like. It really helps my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on Sunday for a new video. Bye-bye.